Hello, so I wanted to kind of update you on uh, what I did with my last video, kind of looking at a lot of this uh, data and what's going on with the current virus situation and uh, just show you some of the stuff that I've come up with and uh, showed you before how I was doing a Excel spreadsheet with a lot of the data. Uh, like I mentioned before, I got a lot of this data from the CDC website, the uh, US, uh, you know, CDC government website, the, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Health website, Worldometer, and one or two other sites, and I'll show you that in a second. I just wanted to show you what I've seen with what's going on with the data. So this is the uh, curve of the total US cases. Uh, like we said before, it was kind of initially showing a steep upward kind of exponential growth and then it kind of flattened out, kind of went into a straight line and now it's finally gradually slightly curving the other direction. Um, so it's showing a good sign there. And I'll just again say here from the outset, you know, a lot of this is um, controversial, I, I guess you could say, because, you know, we're talking about people that have gotten ill and people that have passed away. So I don't want to take that lightly. Um, that's something that's disturbing and, and you know, tragic. Um, people passing away from this. I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. I, um, I'm just trying to show what's going on in the data to try to hopefully come up with some good trends and something encouraging, something to show people that would be uh, to encourage them. And uh, this uh, chart here shows the percent increase from the previous day. So again, like we showed before, it's got this stud steady downward trend you know, this straight line trend is trying to fit all that data that was kind of weird for a while there. So it's actually going down, trying to go to zero. But the curvy trend, the exponential uh, curve there that's trying to fit all that data is still going down, 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 down. So it's showing a good, good sign that it continues to go down every day for the most part. <clears throat> this is the new US cases each day. Again, there was a couple weird days there. Don't know why that was some kind of reporting thing. Uh, everybody reports data differently. And, but this is the total curve trying to fit all that data. And it's starting to go in a little bit of a bell curve, I guess you could say. You know, it's, it, it peaked and then it's going back down. Yeah, it's jumped around some. But the curve that's trying to fit that data is showing this downward trend, showing a good sign. And you'll spot something immediately here in this graph. <clears throat> Again, we're talking about deaths here. You know, it's, it's tragic, but I'm trying to look at the data and make some sense of it. We had this weird day here, um, April 16th. We had this humongous spike in the death count for that day. But regardless of that, it's still, this one also is doing this little bit of a bell curve, even though that weird thing happened, it's still trying to go down, which is a good sign. And this is the total cumulative deaths. You know, we had that jump because of that one day, and but now it is kind of straightening back out and hopefully curving the right way. Not fast enough, but you know, hopefully it will. And this is another chart showing the percent change from the previous day. So, you know, again, we got this steady downward linear trend and all that data going down steadily. And the data jumped around a lot again for a while. So this curvy exponential curve trying to fit all that data was kind of did a weird thing. And now it's steadily going down, down, down. You can see, you know, even though we had that spike, and I'll explain all that in a minute, why that spike occurred, we had that that weird spike in the data. So I will um, try to share my screen here with some of the other things that I've looked at. So 
this is the CDC website, their daily you know, update on, on coronavirus and the number of cases, deaths, and, um, oh, I see this just updated. Okay, this just updated for today. I don't have that in my data yet, but I'll get it there uh, for you. They update these things in the afternoon. Um, but what I wanna show you is right here. Total cases in, included 3,396 probable cases and total deaths include 5,352 probable deaths. Probable being the key word. Um, and right away I spotted something doesn't make sense here. How can you have 776,000 cases and only 300 probable cases, but at the same time have 41,000 deaths with 5,352 probable deaths? That mathematically doesn't make sense to me, but I will keep going here. This is their um, you know, map of the country. Again, it says confirmed and probable cases. Um, and this is the data from each, the, this is the total cases, you know, what, what my graph is based on for the total cases is this data right here. And uh, they have a lot of demographic data. I won't go into all that, but I wanted to show you if I can find it here, uh, okay, about the data on this page. So why did that spike occur, you know, was my question. Why all of a sudden this big spike in the number of deaths, you know, even though the cases has kind of gone on more of a, a gradual trend. Right here it is. As of April 14th, 2020, CDC case counts and death counts include both confirmed and probable cases and deaths. Right there. So they changed how they're reporting the data, and that's why we have that humongous spike in the death count because they changed it to include probable cases. What does probable cases mean? Well, you know, right here they have some explanation confirmed case is laboratory evidence, meaning a test. A probable case is defined by, they got some criteria here with, you know, it says with no confirmed laboratory testing performed, meeting presumptive laboratory evidence. I don't know what that means. Uh, how can you have presumptive <laughs> laboratory evidence? Um, and then again, it says meeting criteria with no confirmatory laboratory testing performed. Okay, so that's the CDC website. Um, right there, you know, just basically admitting we're talking presumed cases on top of, of um, you know, confirmed cases. I'll show a couple other screens here. Here's one that this comes from the worldometer data that I mentioned before. Again, we had that one day with that humongous spike and I, you know, I was like, what is going on? You know, there's something's got to explain this and I just showed you why. And um, here's the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Health website showing their total cases. And um, let me see if I can find it here. Okay, they have data, they have data here in different forms. They have um, the total for the whole state, negative tests, positive tests and deaths, and uh, when it's updated each day, this one's just updated here this afternoon, positive case counts include confirmed and probable cases. So again, they've changed also the state reporting to, to include the, the probable cases and they go through some demographics here on their website too, and they go through, you know, the the county counts, and um, you know the number of confirmed cases and deaths in those counties, and then they have a map here of the whole state. Again, right here, they're talking about confirmed and probable cases. So that you know, Pennsylvania has has also changed how they're reporting this, and um, I think I could show you one more thing here. So this was again from Worldometer, kind of 
echoing that what happened what here the new CDC guidelines as of April 14th CDC case counts and deaths include both confirmed and probable cases and deaths and uh, I thought well, what's going on why that big spike on that one day you know what happened there and uh, and right here it is on April 14th New York City reported 3778 additional deaths that have occurred since March 14th and have been classified as probable. So they took, you know, what? Over a month of, of deaths that were not attributed to COVID-19 and threw them all in on that one day on, on uh, in the middle of April, you know, just several days ago. So that's why the big um, spike in the death count for that one day it wasn't, that didn't actually happen on that one day. And I don't know what the media said about that because I don't watch the mainstream media. I just wanted to show you the, the data and where it's coming from. Again, death certificates, you know, they're saying had no known positive laboratory tests for SARS COVID 2, which that's what I call it, but they're calling it COVID 19. But the death certificate lists as cause of death COVID 19. Like, there it is. So, I just wanted to uh, to share that information with you, you know, and hopefully show something a little bit encouraging during this tough time. You know, yes, we got a lot of tragic things happening, but hopefully things are going in the right direction here. So I wanted to show you, how, especially the cases, um, you know, of new cases, it's definitely going in the right direction. And uh, so that's encouraging to me, and I just wanted to share that with you. So thanks for watching, and as I find new data, I will share it.